clean up as Mick likes. I'm just doing a bit of a shop for him. Not many there. No, I can't see you. Just a sec. Marcia, who's serving today? Sorry, what? Who's serving? Oh, why? Okay. Oh, Expecting Jackie Cock, are we? No, it doesn't matter. I'll go somewhere else. What do you want? Just some cotton wool, it doesn't matter. You know, it was Ron that banned the Farnham's, not me. Is it for real? No Farnham sign? I thought it was one of Ron's jokes. The joke's on Ron. If you ask me, there's enough trouble caused around here like looking for some more. Oh, that's 60, please. And I'd rather you spent your money here than somewhere else. Have you heard any more about Terry? Oh, mother, he's been arrested. Sinbad reckons Barry Grant's been murdered. Murdered? Is serious? I'll just take these, please, love. Reckons he's involved with gangsters. Are you in the police, aren't you? That's right. Last time I was here, you just opened the place. Oh, that awful day, wasn't it? Hmm. Bye. Bye. All right, girls. What's this? A minute's silence. Do you reckon he's here about Terry? Who was he? Oh, he's in the CID. He came when Sue and her little boy was killed. Listen, Dee Dee, thanks a lot for everything. Yeah. So, uh, what's happening with Terry then? Oh, yeah, what were you saying? Oh, yeah, Sinbad reckons that Barry Grant and Terry were involved in a shootout with gangsters on Formby Beach and only Terry got out alive. Never. Mm? Oh, 672, please. Oh, God, I haven't got enough. I'll just run and catch Sinbad. So, how come a window cleaner knows about a shootout? Oh, he's taking notice he's wasted cleaning windows. He should be in Hollywood. <laughs> I can't see those two involved with gangsters, can you? Well, not Terry. I mean, that Barry's got a mean streak. I've always thought that. The way he speaks to Ron sometimes. I think it was more likely Terry was going to commit suicide. Do you reckon? Well, I look at it this way. He's lost his wife, his kid. The business has flopped. So why else would you go around and sit in the garden of your old house with a gun in your hand? Yeah. Oh, it's all a bit weird. Barry going missing and his jeep just left on the beach. They didn't pay me only caretaking money last week, you know. Why not? Because dead men don't pay wages. There you are. The perfect title for this gangster story you've dreamed up. Oh. Barry always gives me half my money up front when he goes away. He never oh. fails. It should add up nicely after seven years, then. How do you mean? Well, when someone's been missing for seven years, you can have them presumed dead. Big claim of what they leave in the will. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, he is dead. Oh, I. Who's dead? Don't tell me you haven't yet. Hi, love. Hi, Chip. Hi, Frank. Come on, then, er... Uh... Who snuffed it? Anyone I know? I suppose you'll take the mickey and all, will you? Why should I? Who is it? Barry Grant. You are joking. They will look like I'm joking. Barry dead? Straight up? I don't know. Poor Terry, eh? Had a belly full, hasn't he? All right. Afternoon. Day off, is he? Well known fact, people don't buy conservatories in the morning. Any tea on, love? Well, I'm busy, I'll do it in a minute. I'm knackered, you know. Didn't sleep a wink last night. Yeah, I'm not surprised. You were prowling round half the night. I was prowling round because you wouldn't stop snoring. Hey, I don't snore. Joking, aren't you? You want to hear yourself? I'm going to take you one of these nights and play it back to you. It's because she has to sleep on her back. Your mum's the same, love. Did it keep you awake? No. I was always too tired after work to be kept awake. What are you doing, Sam? Pack me back for when I go in. Already? You've got weeks yet? Yeah, well, it's one job out the way, isn't it? You don't have to do it now, surely. It's a first baby on. Let her enjoy it. Enjoyment? Back in a case? It's the little things, isn't it, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Anyway, she's always got it ready in case she decides to do the bunk on you. That's the way he tells her. He's only joking out. <laughs> Stay to these. I can't take these in. I feel ashamed. Do you think I could get a new pair? What, you have to have them straight away, like? Well, I want it just to be all right. Well, how much is it going to cost for a new pair, Sam? I don't know, about a tenner. Well, they're just going to be lying in that case, aren't they? It's a waste of money. Can't it wait? If you're short of a tenner, though. I didn't say that, Mr Rogers. Well, I mean, I could get them for it. Cut a loan, if you like. If she wants a tenner, she can have a tenner. That's obvious she's short. Yeah, there's a tenner there. It, it doesn't really matter. Come on, Owen. Forget your pride. You're short, so... No, look, there's the money there. We're all right. Owen, 
Dad, please. Look, you bought us loads of stuff. Cots and everything, didn't you? That's no problem. I'm gonna have loads of money soon. I know we are. It's not my fault to work on a commission-only basis and have to wait for me money, is it? It's only a ten alone. I wish you wouldn't be so proud about it. I think we'll just spend our own money, Dad. It's the best way. Will you stop interrogating me? I wish I hadn't opened me gob. I'm only asking, aren't I? I'm interested, that's all. Listen, I've known Barry as long as you have, you know. So you reckon he's gone for good, then? Kaput, like? Jimmy, how many times have I got to tell you? He's been topped. Mr Corkill. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Detective, um... Kent, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Uh, no, no, no. Are you still caretaking this little lot, then? Uh, me, no. I haven't done for months. He's your man now. Mr... Uh, Sweeney, but everyone calls me Sinbad. Well, keep yourself available, Mr Sweeney. I might want to work with you later. With me? Yeah. Why? Is that a problem? No. Definitely not, no. No, um, I'll be here when you want me. I'll, uh, I'll make myself available. Right. Well, we'll be in touch when we need you, then. What was all that about? What are you playing at, eh? Sucking up to coppers? I'm not. Barry was my mate as well as my boss, you know. Just wanted help. Oh, yeah. How? It's part of my duties as the caretaker, isn't it? You know, police liaison and that. Behave. Delusions of grandeur. One sign of insanity. A hey, mix of it behind with his housework. I'm going to go back and do a clean. Oh, do you have to? He's got enough on his plate with the kids. Well, I'll give you that hand, then. I thought you were supposed to be cleaning these windows. Oh, well, he can wait, can't he? No, he can't. Like you said, you didn't get your caretaker money last week. See ya. See ya, kids. See ya. Hey, the police might need us. So, uh, no takers for this unit, then? You're not still dreaming about renting it, are you? It's empty, isn't it? Hey? Eh? And I am a local businessman, aren't I? Barry Grant gone. <laughs> See ya. Matty! Slim, are you on your way up to Barry's flat? Yeah, thought I'd stay a while, see if he turns up, you know. Only uh, two CID fellas have just gone off, you know. I've just come from the courts. Teddy's been remanded in police custody for having that shotgun. Is that all not about the Asians, no? Well, you know, me theory and that, like, you know. Will you shut up about those flaming Asians? You're talking about things you know nothing about. All right, Matty, I'm sorry, sorry. Stop dreaming up things what didn't happen, eh? Judging by what's hanging up and what's left in the wash, Barry Grant wasn't going anywhere for very long. Yeah. It's not much to show for 30 odd years, is it? Hmm, useful. We'll keep that. Yes, come in. Uh, Angie downstairs. You were in court this morning. Sullivan's remand. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Nolan, Matty Nolan. Come in, Mr. Nolan. Come in. That's right, we logged a couple of calls from you inquiring after Sullivan, yes? Yeah. Uh, when can I see him? Well, he's helping us at the moment. But he has his own solicitor after this morning, so he's in good hands. Look, what's going on? What's happening? Are you related to him? I'm just a friend. I work for him a while in the pizza place next door, you know. I know him through Barry Grant. How long have you known him? Oh, donkey's years, since he was a school kid. I know him through Barry Grant. Oh, Barry Grant. Are you related to him? I'm an old friend of his mother and father. Well, I suppose you know that Mr Grant has disappeared. Yeah, I'm worried sick. Sit down. No, Tar, I'm okay. You're worried sick, you say? Why? Are you afraid he's come to some harm? Well, I don't know. I mean, what did Terry say? Does he know where he is? Well, I'm afraid Terry Sullivan's not being very helpful at the moment. He refuses to make a statement. He won't even speak. He's in a state of shock. Well, do you know what's happened to Barry? You found his jeep on the beach, didn't you? You're very well informed, Mr Nolan. Well, everyone's talking about it, you know. Yeah, we found Mr Grant's vehicle. We also found two empty cartridges, patches of blood, and shot damage to the side of the vehicle. And we found Terry Sullivan in a state of shock in possession of a sawn-off shotgun. How long have those two been friends? Hmm? What is it? 20 years? Because now Barry Grant's disappeared without even taking a toothbrush. 
Hey, look. I think I'd better be getting off. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Nolan, we'd like you to stay. Uh, listen, them coppers are still around, you know. Sorry? I'm just saying that's all. That's all you want, Marcia. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit early, isn't it? I'm supposed to be sharing that with Jackie Corker who runs out on the Moby, but she insists on having the afternoon off. I told her the washing machine man's coming this afternoon, but there's no chance. I don't know what we're going to do next week, but she's got her two weeks off. Yeah, well, it's all business, isn't it? I wish it was. Why do you think Ron's out on the movie trying to get back old customers? Mick, I'm trying to close. Will you hurry? I'm just on my way to yours. I've done the shop and I'm just going to do a bit of cleaning. Yeah, I'll read that. An acknowledgement to that petition of mine. It says, thanks, but no thanks. They're not rebuilding Manor Park and the kids will still be dispersed to other schools. Brilliant. Oh, no, that's terrible. All the efforts, all the publicity we got for the demo, and they haven't listened to a word. But it says here there's a meeting on Monday at the comp to explain. <laughs> explain how we've been sold down the river. Well, I'm going to make sure we get everybody there. Look, haven't you got enough problems without getting involved in all this? If they've decided to close... It is a problem and a principle, Mars. I want them to know how we feel. Uh, can we discuss this outside, please? Right. Just my kids, Mars. I mean, it affects dozens of people around here. Look, I'll see you later. Yeah, see you. Hi, Mick. Uh, Jimmy, I'm closing. Hey, listen, dear, you've got a minister just wanted a quick word, love. Well, you have to tell me here. Hey, this uh, water's not too hot, you know, Dee. Oh, well, I wanted it to be in private, know what I mean? It'll have to do. Look, I'm closing. I'm at the shop if you want. Uh, uh, thanks. Look, what is it? I've got to go. Listen, uh, you know Sinbad reckons that Barry Grant's dead. Can't even talk about anything else around here. No, I was just wondering how you're going on for the rent and that, like. I mean, I know Ron pays cash every month. Well, uh, if Barry's dead. I don't know, Jimmy. I'm more concerned about finding it, let alone paying it. <sighs> Your coffee. Hold off for me, thanks. I'm in a rush. Okay. Uh, have you left the number on the pad? Um, no, I haven't. Oh, well, and you know I like to know where you are. I mean, it only takes a minute. Look, Sammy, I've told you. The only thing I can do is leave you my clients' home numbers, and I'm not doing that because it's dead embarrassing. Well, hey, it's only for an emergency. I said I'd call you. You always say that. This is ridiculous, this, isn't it? You're not due for weeks, I keep telling you. Look here, take this. Get yourself the slippers. I wish you and my dad didn't fight, you know. We're not fighting, Sammy. I just want to pay my own way. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, can you just leave me a number? I can't. Look, I don't know how to tell you this, but you know what they've gone and done to me, don't you? What? He wrote me into this sales and training seminar. I mean, I've got to spend the night at a hotel in Chester. When tonight? Well, I tried to get out of it, didn't I? I mean, I said, look, my missus is pregnant, but they were having none of it. Well, can't you get out of it? I mean, ring in sick or something? Well, well, I can't really do that, can I? I mean, if I start all that, they'll just think I'm, I'm skiving and they might give me the boot. Oh, wait, it's only 20 miles away. Can't you come home and go again in the morning, then? Well, I can't do that, can I? I mean, you, well, you know what they're like. They're just, they're, they'll give me loads of stick, won't they? What's the name of the hotel? Um, do you know what the boss did tell me, but... Must have slipped my mind, but... Well, I'm seeing him later, so he'll probably fill me in and I can tell you later. Look, will um, you phone me when you check in, then? Of course I will. Right. Uh, have you forgotten something? No. Oh. I'll see you. Bye. So Grant gets you to go to a deserted beach. What for? To bring something? He wanted me to get Terry to come and see him. Well, why didn't he phone Terry Sullivan? I don't know. He wanted me to bring that girl Fran back into Liverpool. Fran? Fran Pearson. Tall, long blonde hair. Hmm? I think that's a second name, yeah. Yeah, did you know that Miss Pearson is a friend of Sullivan's wife? And she's a witness in a murder case? I mean, what was she doing out there? What's her relationship to him? She was having Barry's baby. She wanted money for the baby. Did he give her any money? No, he didn't want nothing to do with her. Although he did say he'd see her all right eventually. What was the relationship between Terry Sullivan and Miss Pearson? They were friends. Is that all they were? Do you know what it's like to lose a wife? I do. Look, Terry was still grieving over Sue. 
Any fool could see he wasn't interested in anything like that. Well, what did they talk about, then? Hmm? Talked about leaving. About getting away. I was dead scared what might have happened between him and Teddy, you know. He was in a really strange mood, as if something was preying on his mind. Well, what was it? If I knew, I'd tell you, for God's sake. I can just see him sitting there with that gun. A gun? Barry Grant had a gun. What sort of gun? What sort of gun? It was a shotgun, I think. Did you ask him why he had it? Did you ask him why he had it? He said he had it for protection. What, against who? Not Terry Sullivan, not someone he's known for 20-odd years, surely? Oh, no. No, Mr Nolan, I think we'll take a statement. I wish I never would have passed on that message. I wish you would have just walked away and left him alone. He'd have been 33 today. Um, Patricia, I'm sorry to bother you. I was just wondering if you could do me a favour. Me? If you don't mind. I thought the Dixons were boycotting the Farnums. Well, Ron might be. Well, I mean, well, we didn't fall out, did we? I suppose not, no. Well, you see, Ron's on the Moby and Jackie Cook is on a day off. And I'm supposed to be minding the... I don't believe it. You're going to ask me to mind your precious shop so I can refuse my husband when he calls around for a packet of sausages? Well, the washing machine fellas kept me waiting for ages, and I was supposed to be back at the shop. I'd ask our Jackie, but she's in the middle of a GCSEs. Would you keep an eye out for me till he comes? I suppose you've asked everyone else you could find. Well, I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't urgent. Well... I'm afraid I'm going to have to say no, too. I've got to go shopping. The supermarket. Margaret could do it, though. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. I... No, I'll go and ask her. Oh, no, don't bother her. I can manage somehow. No problem. I mean, after all, she's my employee, isn't she? I wouldn't be like letting a stranger into your house. She can be trusted. I'm sure she's busy enough looking after the little one. Sure you don't want me to ask? You'd be sorry to lose her. Sorry? Well, I know our Derek's making plans, and if he decides to move away from here, I suppose she'll be going with him. Bye. Are you just talking to David? Yeah! She give her. She nearly asked me to sit in next door and wait for her washing machine repair. <laughs> she did, and after all the things she's said and done to us. What did you say? Well, I said no, of course, but um, not till I wound her up a bit. I offered her your services. <laughs> never. You should have seen her face. Oh, what did she say? She said she could manage. Mm -hmm. Bet she never thought I'd ask you, eh? <laughs> Wait, well, I told Derek. Um, she did say something interesting, though. She uh, said that uh, Derek had been making plans. Well, yeah, he will be now he's finished with the church and everything. Mm -hmm. I just wondered where Max and Lee fitted in with those plans. Sorry? It says something you haven't told me. Like what? Well, Dee Dee suggested that Derek's plans might involve moving away from here. Um, well, we hadn't actually talked about that. He just needs a job. But if he did move away, you'd go with him? I see. Um, well, I'd best go and see to Thomas. He's really angry with the education. It's not like him. He's pretty laid back, usually. Are you listening? Sorry. Mind you, it's lousy when you don't even get a chance to put a proper... Uh, do you still want to see me? Not at the moment, no. Only I have a breakdown about now, you know. Right, well, when we need you, we'll send a car for you. Well, I don't want to be any hassle, you know, we're paying on the taxpayer and all that. <laughs> right. Well, when we need you, we'll be in touch. Right. Hey, what are you doing? Just thought you might stick around a bit longer. Why do you want them to stay around? What's so special about having them around? Because I want anyone who might be watching to know that I'm in contact with the busies. Who's going to be watching us? Look, it's about Barry Grant. Oh, not that again. Look, I'm serious, Mars. Well, you can still catch them. Run and tell them. I can't. I can't. I wouldn't mind if Owen wants to... mow it now and then, you know. Some you all right? Yeah, it's just a pain. I was going to go into town, like, but... Ow! 
Uh, I'll get a doctor, eh? No, no, don't be soft. They told me at the classes I'd get these twinges. It's all right. Are you sure? I could run you down there, you know. No, honestly. Look, it's easy now. I feel stupid. Wouldn't do any harm having a checkup, would it? Sooner you got me a cup of tea. Well, have a lie down then. When I've had some tea. Go on, I'll live. Hey, a pair of amateurs, aren't we? <laughs> no, it sounds crazy, mad. But I went with him. Are you going to get to the point or what? Barry nicked about 30 grand of a mood's fake money. You saw him? Did you take any? Oh, don't be stupid. I'm not that soft, am I? Well, why are you so tight about it, then? Because he caught me in the pizza parlour, didn't he? Got me by the oven and said he'd bear me if I didn't tell him who pinched the money. The worst thing is he knew about me and you. So that if I didn't tell him, he was going to hurt you. Why the hell didn't you tell me all this? Because I didn't want to frighten you. I'm not frightened. I'm furious. All the times you and me have talked about not keeping things from each other, about trusting each other, about being open. And you go and do this? But, Maz, I just kept it from you because I love you. Why did you have to get involved, eh? Why can't you just keep out of it? Maz! Right. I don't want you to say a word about this to anyone. Not the busies, anyone. I won't. If Barry Grant comes back, you keep away from him, all right? He won't. I know he won't. Oh, come here. That was nice. Come on, you can go finish mowing the lawn now. And you can forget about going to town, all right? Yeah, I'm going to have a lie down. Will you give me a call later and I'll start the tea? Sam, that's all right. I'll do that. Oh, done. <clears throat> do you need a hand? No, go on, don't be soft. <sighs> but I think this upstairs, I know. <sighs> Casey went to school. Poor kid, she'd be shattered. 
She sat after night waiting for Owen to ring. Uh, did you phone me mum again? Well, I waited till I thought she'd be up, but I missed her. She'd be at work by now. <laughs> oh. Now, look. Now, you relax and remember what the nurse said and take deep breaths. <laughs> I'm scared, Dad. There's no need to be Sam. You've got everything you want here. Yeah? Chester, I want him here with me. Don't worry, love. He'll be in touch. He'll be in touch. <laughs> I told him if I was out on the movie. I haven't done him in. Yes, thank you. Listen, if you want to avoid me, Jackie Corker's doing the afternoons. I just stopped in for your washing machine, man, you know. Oh, it's all right. I managed in the end. Is it all right, then, now? 84, please. Um, I suppose so, until the next time. Have them policemen searching all the shops? Yeah, but what they expected to find in our stockroom, I just don't know. Have you heard any more? Well, Sinbad was saying he reckons Barry Grant's been murdered by gangsters. Well, you don't want to listen to what he says. I've noticed he stopped his soft stories since all the police have been on around the show. Mm. I was talking to Mr Rogers. He says that Terry might be thinking of committing suicide. Yeah. Well, we all know about suicides, don't we? Hey, why all this gossiping? Starting rumours? Eh? Why don't you mind your own business? Why do you have to tittle-tattle to people in here, eh? Starting rumours? She's not. She's just repeating what she's heard. I heard her. Well, she's not starting rumours. Look, it's not right. Barry and Terry are friends of mine. They're both friends of mine. I haven't said a word. I used to work for Terry in the pizza place. He's accusing me of starting rumours. I'm sick of the whole thing. Oh, well, his stuff about Terry Sullivan. Yeah, I heard about that. There's police cars and everything on the close, wasn't there? Margaret! I wanted to thank her. What for? for? Sticking up for me in front of him. Oh, you two speaking now again, are you? Well, we're both trying. It's just as well I got my machine fixed, isn't it? <laughs> do you mind? I mean, I'll do it myself. You'll need a key, won't you? So, I think I'll do a bit of revising while I'm there. It's quieter than the flat. Do what you want, love. I like me. Hey, have you heard anything about Terry? Yeah, he's still being questioned. So there's no chance of him getting out on bail. There's all this lot going on. Well, look, have you heard what he's supposed to have done? Oh, it's a CID job. Sorry, Mick. Oh, listen, there's uh, something else I wanted to ask you. I know as much as you. No, no. I wanted to know if you and your girlfriend had come along to this public meeting at the Comprehensive on Monday night. Oh, what meeting is that? It's about the future of the primary school. They're not going to rebuild it. Oh. All right, straight eight. Don't run off, will you? Hi, what's up? Well, they're not going to rebuild the primary school. What school? At Manor Park. It was burnt down while you were abroad. So I want as many people there as possible, you know, show them that we mean business. Oh. Me and I haven't got any kids. You're going to get married, though, aren't you? So you never know. Well, I don't think so. You know, public meetings aren't my kind of thing. Yeah, but we've got to look to the future. I mean, if they don't rebuild, then all the local kids are going to be scattered everywhere. But do you know what? I'm on late on Monday night. Well, Angie's coming, you know. Well, what about you, Trace? I mean, it was part of the community, that school, you know. It doesn't really affect me, does it? Have you tried on the estate? Yeah, I'm on my way. See you. See you, mate. Do you know what? You'd be better off going to that meeting than poking your nose in here. I've just been up to the flat to see if Matty's heard from Barry. Keep out of it, will you? Before you know it, they'll be roping you in for questioning, you know? I don't even know what's going on. Keep it that way, eh? Miss Pearson, you saved me looking for you. Can you spare a few minutes? That's what I said. Yeah, a sales and training conference for compact conservatories. Are you sure? Okay, thanks, yeah. Sit down. I don't phone. Oh, you'll be out working now, surely. I thought there might be more help here. Five flaming hotels in Chester I've liked, and nobody knows anything about compact conservatories. There must be more than five hotels in Chester. What a mess. Oh, come on. How is she? She's uh, still having these contractions, poor kid. I mean, she's shattered. And she wouldn't sit because he hasn't turned up. Well, wouldn't it be 
better if you went home and got a few hours sleep. I can stay here. Oh, no, I'm, I'm too hyper to sleep. I mean, I'm better off here. I mean, doesn't he realise he's supposed to be here? He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, but he would have done, wouldn't he, if he'd have done what he promised and phoned. Hey, I'd love to know what he's up to. As soon as he hears, he'll come running, believe me. Yeah, well, he better add. I could kill him, you know, for putting air through this. I mean, where the hell is he? I want some more toast on, Mum. Do you want a cup of coffee? Mum! Why? Why did you go to the beach with him? I mean, did he force you to go? Don't be ridiculous. But why did you go with him? Because I was convinced he was going to run out on me. I wanted money for the baby. Did he give you any money? Did he, L? <laughs> said he'd bung me a few grand as soon as he could. But I said that wasn't good enough. I wanted proper arrangements, regular payments. And what did he say to that? What I expected. He said he didn't give a toss. You don't know him. As soon as he was fed up of me, he just dumped me. It's true, he couldn't care less. Because the baby isn't his? I don't believe it. You're all the same. Of course the baby's his. What's your relationship with Terry Sullivan? He's a friend, why? God! Is Terry Sullivan the father of your child? No, he isn't. What's this secret of Barry Grant's? I, I don't know what you mean. We know that Grant summoned Sullivan to the beach. We know he had something to tell him. Something secret. Something that he had to tell him. I don't know anything about that. Why was Barry Grant carrying a gun? I don't know. Does he usually carry a gun? I've never seen him with one. Because he was frightened, Fran. He was frightened of Terry Sullivan. That's why he was carrying a gun. You see, I think we have to go back, back to last year, to the death of Sue and Daniel. I believe Terry Sullivan murdered his wife and child. But Graham Curtis All did. the evidence was there, yes. But I've never known a man to shout his innocence as much as he did. He was shouting it right up to the last minute until someone cut his throat just to keep him quiet. Terry wouldn't murder anyone. Wouldn't he? We haven't got to the bottom of Curtis's murder. The file is still open. But it has crossed my mind that someone wanted him silenced. This is all wrong, totally wrong. Well then, Fran, what is the truth? I believe that Barry Grant got somewhere near the truth. I believe he found out that Terry Sullivan murdered his wife and child, and Barry wanted to confront him. That's the secret, Miss Pearson. I also think it cost Barry Grant his life. What do you think, Miss Pearson? All I know is Terry Sullivan wouldn't murder anyone. We'll see. Can I go? Yes. Perhaps we'll arrange to take a statement from you later. No. No, I don't know what department she's in. Mrs. Chrissy Rogers. Christine Rogers. Yeah, yeah, hello. Frank, midwife and doctor have gone in. I think the baby's on its way. When's she going? Just now. Did you get her in or your wife? Oh, it's too late now, isn't it? Fran, you were knocking around with him for ages. If he had a secret about Terry, he would have told you. Barry never told me anything. It was something important. It had to be. Look, I am going to take this stuff to Terry now. You were on the beach with him all night. He must have said something. I know you know something. I don't. If you want to know anything, ask the police. They're full of theories. You're holding something back, aren't you? I can tell. I don't know anything about a secret. All I know is that the police think Terry killed Barry. I don't believe it. Not Terry. You don't think he's dead, do you? I don't know. Is that bag really for Terry? Do you think I would do anything for Barry? You've got to tell me if he's alive. You've got to. I don't know. Look, if you want to know what I know, it's this. I wish I had never met Barry Grant. I never want to see him again. And if he is dead, he's got what he deserves. He has wrecked my life, and Terry's wrecked them. I don't care if he's dead or alive.
Good girl. Keep going. Keep going. Well done. Well done. Good girl. You are. It's here. Good girl. Well done. Keep still, Frank. How long has it taken? I mean, she's been in there ages. Ten minutes, to be precise. Did she be all right? Oh, I don't know the best thing about babies. What's up? You? I wouldn't think you had three of your own. Hey. I'm glad you were able to be here. Wouldn't be much worse without you. But we shouldn't be here anyway. Should have been her husband. Little girl. Breathing problem. It's gonna go on a special unit. I know we haven't got any kids at the primary school, Dee, but we need as big attendance as we can, and then we might change the mind. Likely. You said they just ignored the petition. We can't give up, though, can we? I mean, this dispersal to other schools is going to affect about 30 families in this area. Imagine how you'd have felt when yours were little having to walk a mile or two and back every day. I have had to. Stop me working for years until our Tony came back with our Jackie. That's exactly how it's going to affect me and Angie at the salon and lots of others. And they're not all married couples, so it's going to affect people's work good style. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Oh, it's not only that, though, dear. It's like a community centre, that place. I mean, I wouldn't have met half the people around here if it wasn't for hanging at the gates and waiting for the kids to come out. A real tragedy, that fire. I know our Jackie was hanging around with those kids, but she wasn't responsible for that fire. She really wasn't. I'm not blaming anyone, Dee. But it was a tragedy, and it does need to be rebuilt. All right, then, love. If you're not going to come, can I put this post in your window? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, got my own blue tack. I will come to the meeting. Oh, nice one. You can't count on Ron, though. The fellas aren't so important. I just know the young mothers down the front row, you know. You're a flatterer, you are. Is there a joke over? What? No, not that, Mick. There's no fan I'm saying. Have you done your washing? Was it needs? It's drying and ironing. I'll do it after tea. You're safe to tea, aren't you? Yeah, why not? Thanks, Dee. See ya. Mum, you know I said the flat was noisy. Hmm. Well, it's worse at night. I was just wondering if I could stay on a bit after tea to revise. Michael, you don't have to ask that. It's still your home and it always will be. Yeah, but, you know, if I got late in that, could I, could I stay the night? Michael, you don't have to ask that either. Having you to stay will make things seem normal. I've had enough upset recently. Uncle Teddy. Everyone thinks that everything's fine now he's leaving the church, but I'm not so sure. You didn't put that sign up, did you? Banning the Farnhams because of Mark. God, no. Your dad did. Max Farnham criticised his prices and his stock. Oh, typical. He's so pig-headed, your dad, sometimes. I haven't been able to talk to him about Derek at all. And he refuses to see the church side of things. Yeah, well, that's the only way to cope with it. You sound like your dad. Maybe. But I talked to Derek when he was staying at my place. His problem was seeing that there wasn't a problem. Once you put the church in all that stupid man-made rules out of the argument. Do you really believe her? Yeah, it's the only way. And now Derek sees it that way, so he hasn't got a problem anymore. It's not what we were brought up to think. Um, well, it's happened. So why should you over it forevermore? Just go along with it and you'll be fine. Well, at least I haven't lost you. You haven't lost your Derek either. I'm sure the church can manage without him. What do you want for tea? Away, Sam. Congratulations, Sammy. I just want to tell her. Don't worry, Sam. There's plenty of time for that yet. It's... 
She's got a bit of a breathing problem. I just wanted to hold her straight away. Are you supposed to? You might feel better if you try to sleep for a bit. I'm sure they'll let you hold her then. I wanted Edward to be with me. I wanted him to see her born. I mean, where is he? I don't know, love. We've tried everywhere. He'll be here soon, I'm sure. I just wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to hold her. I wanted Owen to be with me. I just wanted to hold her. <laughs> two days, two days, not a word out of you. You're not doing yourself any favours, you know that, don't you? I want to know what happened on the beach the other day, Terry. I want to know what happened to Barry Grant. You don't think we've been sitting on our backsides waiting for you to talk, do you? We've been out there talking to people. Matty Nolan, your friend, Fran Pearson. Well, if you're not going to talk, you're going to have to listen to my version of what I think happened the other day. You and Barry Grant weren't getting on too well recently, were you? Hmm? In fact, I'm told things have been strained for weeks. And then all of a sudden, Grant gets in his Jeep and he goes to a beach with a shotgun. Why? Because... Because he was afraid of you, Mr. Sullivan. Mm. He was terrified. I think it was the only place he could feel safe. What brought you out to that beach, Mr. Sullivan? Because hmm? I think I know. I think I know what brought you out there. I think it had something to do with the death of Sue and Daniel. Or perhaps the death of Graham Curtis in prison. Hmm? You see, I just can't bring myself to separate the events that happened on the beach the other day with the events that happened last October. Mr. Nolan told me that Bally Grant had something to say to you, something that was giving him nightmares. You've known Bally Grant for 20 years. You grew up together, you shared a flat together. Why would someone meet a friend of such long standing on a beach in the middle of nowhere with a shotgun? Why would you need a shotgun to protect yourself from a friend? Why? Why? Because... Because he was terrified. Why was he terrified? What was the secret? We have to go back, Terry. We've got to go back, back to last October. We never did get to the bottom of what you were doing and where you were the day your wife and child got pushed off that scaffolding. You said you were too drunk to remember. Very convenient. You even got your father to concoct a false alibi. Do you know something? Do you know something? I think I made a mistake with Graham Curtis. I think I made a mistake with Graham Curtis. When we picked Graham Curtis up for the first time, he was a very frightened man. He had every reason to be. I thought it was just a need for revenge, the reason why you went after him and attacked him in that solicitor's office and then again in the courtroom. And a fourth time he was attacked, he had his throat cut in prison. A very professional job. What was it? What was that information that came Barry Grant's way that made him so frightened? What was the secret that made him so frightened he had to meet you with a shotgun? Hmm? Barry Grant is missing. He hasn't been seen since you went to meet him. He's left his vehicle. He's disappeared off the face of the earth. We found two used cartridges lying by the side of his Jeep. There was damage where a charger's shot hit the vehicle. What did you miss with the first shots? Your prints were all over, and Barry Grant's, all over that gun. And you were the last person found with that gun in your possession. There's blood all over your jacket. Look at it! This is Barry Grant's blood donor card. Group A, the same as on this jacket. We took skin from underneath his razor. We took hairs from out of his bed. This jacket is covered in Barry Grant's blood. You killed him. You killed him because he found out what you'd done to your wife and that child that wasn't even yours. Admit it, Sullivan. Barry Grant was the last man to know your secret and you murdered him. So do you think Max and Patricia will come to the meeting then? Um, I'll tell them about it. I don't mind coming back later to explain it all. See you later, Max. I'll come. Well, you'll come to a public meeting. No one under 20 I've spoken to could be bothered. <laughs> I've sort of got an ape though, haven't I? I mean, if Thomas ends up going to that school, I should know about it. Could do it more like you, Max. We might get some support. See you later. I'll bring someone if you like. Oh, well, you got a boyfriend then? Yeah, you've met him. Have I? Derek. All oh, right. I don't think you'd still be together. See you later.
Hey, what are you playing at taking my car? I'm going to be in the supermarket. Don't worry, I haven't crashed it or anything. You've got no right to take it. Do you know what could do you for taking and driving away? Oh, you never change, do you? It's up with your own car anyway. This is nicer. Will you be here for your tea? No. Hey, this Barry Grant's used for something, hey? Hey? Oh, what I mean is, uh, I've been offered some overtime. They've started digging on Formby Beach. We're looking for a body. Tiny fingers. She's gonna be all right. Got to be. She will be. She's perfect. Yeah, she is. Isn't she? Don't you think we'd better go and see how Sammy is? Sammy's all on her own. I can't leave her here like this. She'll be all right. She'll be well looked after. What is it? What is it? If you'd have been here like you should have been, you'd have known, wouldn't you? It's a girl. I'm sorry. It's too late to be sorry, isn't it? We started digging up the beach. We don't need a body to prove murder. You can give him a lecture on that after I finished. Come on, Terry, start talking. Terry, talk! Right, that's it. We'll finish at that. I'm warning you. If you don't start talking soon, I'm going to charge you. And the murder of Barry Grant will do for starters. Hey, Mick, just on the nose. What's going here? I don't know. I bet your bottom dollar's not going to be in your primary school, though. Well, they're going to have to build a new one somewhere, aren't they? Now, according to the education lot, I have to wipe their backs out of my petition. They still intend farming the kids out all over the place. A public meeting about it tonight. I've been out of it lately. When I see me having a baby in there. Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Little girl, eh? You must be made up first grandchild in there. Oh, well, yeah. I've got to get some shampoo, take you down the Aussie for it. All right, Jimmy. Hey, Sammy's all right, isn't she? Bit down, like. Baby's got pneumonia, and they've got it in an incubator. Doctor says it's just precaution, like. Ah, they're tougher than they look, you know, babies. Still, they can't keep your Sammy away from the incubator, can they? I just think it upsets her sitting there, you know, not knowing what to do. Oh, well, tell her I know when I was asking me. Ah, cheers, mate. Ah, uh, mind your back, sir, lads. Hey, it's yours you want to watch. Do your back in that manual labour oh, when you're not yeah, used to all it. All right, all right, I'll admit it. I have been known, you know, to spend the odd tea time partaking of the light refreshments down the local hostel, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jimmy, you're not telling us you've signed a pledge. Oh, yes, oh, yes, only in disappearing ink. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Jackie, she's nagged me into staying out of the pub, hasn't she, eh, for drink-wise day? Anyway, 
Got better things to do with my time these days, haven't I? Hey. All right, like what? Hey, just wait and see. And I'm telling you, when you do, it'll be brill. I'm sorry to land on you when you're so busy. If you could just tidy up the back. I should have made an appointment. But yesterday it was fine, and suddenly today it's driving you mad. Well, I could have put up with it, but there's this meeting tonight. As if my day at school hadn't been long enough. About the kids at the primary school. I'm going to that. Oh, yes, of course, your children will be affected, won't they? Well, one of them, Jenny, she's at Manor Park. Mick Johnson came in the other day to check that I was going. Of course. I suppose he's right. I mean, if the parents don't show up, the education authority will think we just don't care where they send the kids. Oh, he has got a point about demonstrating parental interest, I mean. Listen, uh, have you heard any more about uh, what's happening with Terry or what? No, still down at the cop shop. I don't know. This place has been crawling with the armed business, you know, looking for Barry. Looks like they think Terry's done him in. Anyway, lads, I've got to get these things for us, Sammy. Don't want to be late for visiting. See you, boys. Yeah, see you, Frank. See you, yeah, ta-da. Hey, Mick. Listen, uh, they definitely, definitely haven't found Barry then, no? No. Mm -hmm. I suppose some people would say good riddance, wouldn't they? You know, Granty, I mean. It's just a shame that uh, Terry's mixed up in it. Mm. Do you reckon Terry could have bumped him off? Oh, I don't know, Jimmy. What I do know is, you know, the smoke is usually fire. See you, mate. Yeah, see you, kid. I've just got a few things that I thought Terry might need. Any sign of Barry yet? He's probably swanned off back to his mates in Birmingham. I wouldn't be so sure. The police must have checked all Barry's old haunts. If he doesn't turn up, Terry could end up in big trouble. You don't seriously think Terry's done anything to Barry, do you? Fran! Do you get Terry's things? Just a change of clothes and that, yeah. Let's get down there and see can we do anything. Do you think they'll let us see him? Don't know until we get there, do we? No. All seems a bit far-fetched to me. Barry Grant will turn off just like the bad penny he is. Anyway, I mean, people just don't go around shooting people, do they? Not often, fortunately. And anyway, Terry's not the type, is he? Still, I suppose they never are the type. So I can rely on you coming to the school meeting tonight, then, Dee? Oh, is it tonight? Where where these go. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mick, I know I'd try and come and swell out the numbers, oh, but... Oh, come on, Dee. I know you haven't got any primary school kids, but those of us who have need your support. I know, but... Dee. Well, I've hardly been home these last few weeks, what with my own job and filling in for Jackie Corkill's shifts. So where's Ron? Out riding the range in his beloved Moby again. We well, usually humping these tins around, not our Derek. Oh, to the left, next to the Dobbins. It'll only be for about an hour or so. I want to show this lot from the education that this community cares. I suppose I could do me ironing another night. Yeah, of course you can. Hey, your Dixie's taking the trouble to turn up, aren't you, mate? Yeah. Are you going? Yeah. Might find out what they're building behind those hoardings. There you go. So, catch us tonight, then, eh? OK, see ya. See ya. See ya. Is uh, Ron worried it'll be a ten-storey supermarket across the road? You know, Ron. Why are you going to this thing tonight? Just out of interest, you know. Local community and that. So, uh, why isn't Mike helping with all these heavy stuff? Mike's got an exam. You know how fast and far our Tony can get when there's a whiff of work. Yeah. It's the same place? Yeah. I hope Ron doesn't think this is a permanent arrangement, me helping out. And for the time being, you're the only unemployed Bob to lay my hands on. Yeah, temporarily unemployed. Didn't I tell you? You know, Bob, you know, Bob and Romy at the digs. Well, he'd heard that he might still be short of leaders for the, uh, the city play schemes, you know, during the summer holidays. It's a bit vague. Maybe for a short term. Uh, keep me going. If nothing turns up before then, you know. But aren't there jobs at the church? Well, there are. Just left one, remember? Well, I didn't mean a priest. I meant... Something to do with the church. You can't just want to forget the church. The chance would be a fine thing. Look, I haven't fallen out with God. Just the institution. They're all waiting for me to come to my senses about Margaret, just like you. But it's not going to happen. I'm going to get my own job, stand on my own two feet. Right, well, if you go to this thing tonight, come have something to eat, we'll go together. Ah, well, there's a couple of things I want to do first, so uh, best if I see you there. Fine. This is all a bit old TT for Max, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, Max, anything to stop the paper boy crossing the lawn. <laughs> um, Mick was round earlier wanting to know if you were going to the school meeting tonight. Not that I thought you'd be going. Oh, shall be. It's Thomas's future. What, no posh school? I would have thought you'd be sending him somewhere private. Hmm, you and Max both. So state skills are better, then? Well, they're not automatically worse. 
And I was certainly well enough looked after under the state health system. Yes, of course you were. All right. Count on you for tonight, can I, Patricia? Absolutely, yeah. Thanks, one. And you, eh, Max? And uh, the boyfriend? Um, yeah. <laughs> See ya. Sorry. I've visited the time. Something wrong? No, no, it's just a bit late on us now, that's all. I thought you weren't going to be able to make it till later. I wanted to see them both, you know. Yeah. It's been a right worrying time, hasn't it? More with the baby coming early, now this. I didn't help, did I? Not being there to bed on that. Oh, I don't know. But where were you, on? I was in Chester working, like I told Sammy. So I'll come hiring every hotel in Chester, and you're not there. I finished early. And went where? Did what? Well? <sighs> so it was stupid, and I was wrong. I thought she had a couple of weeks to go before the baby was due. I went to meet Mams. I needed a break. You what? Your wife's carrying your kid around for nearly nine months, and you need a break. That's why I didn't tell you. Because I knew you wouldn't understand. I needed a break from you. I needed a break from Sammy as well. I'll meet back every five minutes about work, job, money, God knows what else. Slip isn't that, love? You know, like Sam. What did the doctor say then? Um, the temperature's up a bit. I think I might have a little infection from the stitches. <sighs> little. Do you want to try sitting on it? Have you been down to the unit, seen the baby in there? Say, yeah. How is she, Sam? Well, didn't he say anything, Sam? Well, if he hasn't said nothing, probably means he's on the mend. I mean, if there was something wrong, they'd say, wouldn't they? Not improving. That's all they said. Well, not a bit. Did he say why? That's all he said. No signs of improvement. Oh, well, Cinders can't go to our public debut as a couple with one shoe. We'll find it. <laughs> oh, and Patricia's coming as well. Yeah, uh, so's Dee Dee. Does she know we're going? Well, she knows I am. Look, if I'd have told her that you were going, chances are she'd have probably cried off. And well, I wanted her to see us out together as a couple, just like any other. Show that we don't uh, frighten the horses. Mm, it's OK. As so long as she don't use this meeting to uh, publicly denounce me or anything. Mm. I've been burned as a witch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she wouldn't do that. Not in a smokeless zone. Hi, Derek. Oh, hello. Uh, Mick did say it started at seven, yeah? Yeah, we're nearly ready. We? Oui. Are you going? Both of you? What about Thomas? Oh, I thought I'd ask Max to listen out for him. Oh, I'm not sure he'll like it, but I suppose it'll do him good. Get a bit of father and son bonding in. Well, I did tell Mick we'd go, you know, make it look more. Yeah, well, and to be honest, we thought, well, if we're going public, what better place than a public meeting? I see. Well, do you want me to get off then, leave you to make your big entrance as a couple? No, as soon as Max gets home, we'll walk with you. Or in my case, hop. <laughs> <sighs> All that hanging about, and then they don't even let us see Terry. Look, I think I'll get back to the flat just in case Barry rings. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen. Face it. I mean, why else would they still be holding Terry? Look, just because they can't find Barry doesn't mean to say Terry's done anything. You can't believe that. Terry had a gun. He was covered in blood and... Well, Terry had his reasons. For what? For killing his best mate? Look, I know something went on between them. Something Barry thought he'd done to Terry, but it couldn't have been anything as bad as that. Do you want Barry to be dead? Or are you telling all you know about what happened on that beach? Just believe me, Matty, please. 
I know why Terry would want to kill him. You can't. So go on. You wouldn't want to know. Know what? Look, you're putting two and two together and getting five, just like the police. No. I know something that the police don't. Like what? Like what? Oh. Terry had every reason. Because Barry killed Sue and Danny. Ooh, did you get me favourites? Ma? Anyway, of course, I was your favourite bit as well. Well, you're already after custom keys. Hey, what are you doing? Come on. I said, what are you doing? Well, you see this? This is a door, right? And this is a key. And if you put that in there, it opens. It's amazing what they think of, isn't it, eh? I'd have thought you'd have known that being a caretaker. You got that key cut, didn't you, when I lent you the others? I might have done. And the landlord might have given it to me and all, because I'm renting the premises. Yeah. Would he be missing you down the festival of comedy? Look, I better get going. I don't want to make a mig for this week. All right, then. I'll see you in a minute, all right? Yeah. See you, Mars. So, come on, what's going down, are they? Listen, it's on the level. Empty premises, entrepreneur, requiring same, OK? Oh, yeah. You're joking, aren't you, Jimmy? You're squatting your mean, don't you? I thought you were going straight, thought there was going to be a big change. What happened? Look, I'm not breaking the law, am I? Hey, it's empty. What harm is it doing to anyone, eh? Until you get caught. Oh, yeah. By you. And when? Look, whatever happens, it's going to take him at least a couple of months to get me out of here. And by that time, Sunshine, the profit will be in my pocket, OK? It's not right, though, is it, eh? You getting minted on the back of somebody else's misery. Barry Grant. Uh, well, looks as if he's well and truly out of it, doesn't he? Hey, do you still reckon him going missing? Have anything to do with them Asians? No, I'm glad to say. Well, the busy seems to reckon it was something between Barry and Terry. Hmm. Poor old Tess, eh? Still, it's an ill wind. And all that. Mm. Especially when it blows a nice little shop squat your way, eh? Yeah. Listen, you, don't knock it. If it's good enough for Oxford Street, then it's good enough for yours truly. See ya. I've heard they've reopened the trial, his wife and little kitty. Hello? Well, I suppose it did cross people's minds, but, well, it might have been Terry. Did it? I suppose you never can tell, eh? Hi. Hi. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave this one there, OK? OK. We'll get as many down the front as we can, make it look better, you know? Yeah. Is this all the primary school parents are? Yeah. Well, I suppose it's only a small school, eh? Even so. <coughs> God, she's gorgeous. I ate her already. Who is she, anyway? Just someone from the education department that said in the letter. Oh, I like her jacket. You know, that colour suit me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least you're dead, she's here. Patricia, Max, here. Hey, yeah. All right, thanks. Angela, do you know Margaret? I've seen you class in the salon. Hi. How are you? And this is Derek, you're Margaret's... Boyfriend? I'm with you. Hi. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I think perhaps we should get the meeting underway. Oh, First, I'd like to thank you for coming this evening. It's always heartening to see parents who are interested enough in their children's education to make the effort to attend. My name, by the way, is Marianne Dwyer, and I'm here on behalf of the Education Authority. What aren't you, Sam? Oh, no, thanks. It makes me want to give the loo. I think I'll go and have a look at the baby. That's going along, though. Well, don't go and leave me on my own. I'm going to spend enough time looking at these walls. Well, um, I'll tell you what, well, I'll nip down and see you later today. Well, I'll go and have a look at her. Might perk her up, seeing her granddad's ugly mug. <laughs> These are nice. Who'd off? Oh, from your mum. Has she been in? Yeah, with our Katie this afternoon. Oh, nice one. The city is already facing a £1 million bill for vandalism in its schools. Not that this authority is alone, but it is what we as parents, teachers and administrators are all up against. Add to this the fact that the fire insurance on Manor Park isn't enough to fund a new building, and I'm sure you'll agree that the decision to relocate the pupils is the right one. Well, happily, some good has come of all this. 
The insurance will cover the demolition cost of the old school, and the authority intends utilising the land for the benefit of the senior school by providing some much needed car parking space. And now, if there are no questions, I'll ask Mr Bennett to read out the list of permanent alternative schools to which the Manor Park pupils will be allocated. Excuse me. You will each be contacted separately about which school your child will be going to. I know, yeah, but uh, well, that's not the point, though, is it? Perhaps you'd like to stand up so the people at the back can see who's speaking. Stand up. Uh, I just wanted to say... Uh, Mr... Johnson. Mick Johnson. Well, the way I see it, um, uh, the point is, why do the kids have to go anywhere? I mean, why should they be scattered to schools that are strange to them miles from where they live? You know, you talk like Manor Park was just a building, but it's part of things round here. Mr Johnson, I've explained that... Uh, hang on a minute. I've had your say. You know, it takes years to build up a school that kids enjoy going to. And now it's all been thrown away. Why? Not because our kids don't need it. Not because it's no good, but because you lot don't want to spend the money. Our kids may just be uh, numbers to be dispersed by you. But we all care here. Yeah. Yes. And if it is just the money, then why can't we raise it ourselves? Yeah. Build our own school for our own kids. Yeah. 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 Jimmy Caulfield's squatting then? Yeah. Mind you, I don't care what he's doing, as long as the heat's off with the moods lot. Yeah, kids settled all right. Yeah. Told him that story about me climbing the Eiger barefoot. It's a cracker, that. Who would even go looking like that? What? Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Gemma trying to be a hairdresser. Yeah, well, I think she needs another lesson or two. Mm -hmm. Wonder how the meat was going. We should have gone to that, you know. It's just as much support for me as looking after the kids. Mm hmm. Yeah, we'll have to start worrying about that one day, won't we? Schools and that when we have kids of our own. Kids on the brain, you. And you never know, your own might not believe you went up the Arga. Well, the sooner we get started, the better then. Oh, but uh, first things first, we've got to set the day for the wedding yet, haven't we? Yeah, well, there's no rush for that either, is there? No, I think I should have got you a pair of woolly socks when I proposed to you on Valentine's Day, do you remember? Oh, no, hang on, no, you didn't have cold feet then, did you? And I haven't got them now either. Not with you to warm them on every night. But like I said, what's the rush? No, no. I just don't believe it. Look, Terry got this from Graham Curtis, the man that Barry let them think had killed Sue and Danny. Well, why did he want Terry to know he was innocent, even when he'd been found guilty? Yeah, but that still doesn't mean it was Barry. But he couldn't kill a woman and kid. Why would he want to? I don't want to tell you this, but I don't want you to waste your time mourning him. Barry slept with Sue. You were great. Man of the people. Yeah, they're still going to take away a school and give back a car park, though. Well, at least you spoke up. Yeah. Uh, we're walking back to the close, if you'd like to, um... Come oh, um, no, I want to have a word with Ange uh, about my hair. Right, yeah. Right, sir. Uh, well, we'll see you later, then. Bye. See ya. See ya. See you then, mate. See you. Thanks for coming. See you. So what do you want to do in there? What? Oh, my hair. Yeah, um... One kid's loss, eh? Hope you and your staff enjoy your new car park. Look, I don't make the decisions. And you're not a man to take them lying down, are you, Mr Johnson? I wasn't on my own, though, was I? You saw how many agreed with me. Sometimes it's the spokesman that sways people, rather than the issue. Yeah, well, well, in this case, the issue here is that we needed a school before the fire. How can you suddenly decide that we don't need one now? Decisions aren't always as sudden as they might look. It could be that whoever proposed we didn't rebuild Manor Park was pushing an already open door. It would have been closed anyway. It was decided last summer. What? I hope I've helped you understand why it's so unlikely that the decision will ever be reversed. His best friend's wife. And when Sue threatened to tell Terry, he, he killed her. 
Look, he all but admitted it to me. That's what he wanted to tell Terry. Only, looks like Terry's got his revenge. Oh, Barry. What was he to you? He was mine. <laughs> what? He was your son? Yeah. We've got to go to the police. What? No, we must. This is all wrong. But what about Terry? I mean, if you tell the police he had a motive, you've all but given him a rope to hang him with. No. No, it's not right. If a son of mine's a murderer, the police have got to know about it. Spring, are you more like a limb, Lazzy fan? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mick, uh, has Marcia said anything to you lately? What about? Well, nothing really. It's just that we were talking about the wedding and that the other day, and she seemed to be. Uh... You know women. Yeah, Marcia's not like other women, is she? Look, all women are like other women. Listen, I want to catch John. Tell you what, go over to ours and put the cap on me. All right, yeah. <sighs> Listen, Simbad, Marcia thinks they're worthy of you, you know. She said it lately, has she? Well, she doesn't have to. And hey, our Ellis is well out the frame if that's what you're worried about. It's you she's marrying. Just wish she'd say when. John. Hello, mate. Just doing a bit of tidying up. Very nice, but they get a bit leggy. Yeah, uh, Barbara's then, is she? Rarely comes home at lunchtime. Anything I can do? We can tell her I'd like a word. Or just tell her I'd like to know what's going on. I mean, really going on. What about? What about Manor Park Primary? You know they said it wasn't worth rebuilding after the fire and that. Well, it seems that was just an excuse, and it was down for closure anyway. <sighs> Look, Mick, don't think I'm being funny or anything. It's just that generally I don't like to get involved. School's a Barbara's department. You know how it is. Well, that's just it. None of us parents do know how it is. I mean, it's like the education I've just been pulling the wool. Look, I'm sorry to go on, Mick, but we just want what's best for our kids, that's all. Well, of course you do. It's just that if it's backroom politics, I doubt if Barbara will know any more than you do. Just in case, I'll try and catch her later. Yeah. Only Friday, love. If you wait a few while, you know, get near early. Avoid the mob and all that. Hey, friend! What's it, Kit? Any news about Terry? I mean, uh, I've heard the near to challenge, you know. 
Funny though, isn't it? I mean, you'd have thought they would have had to have found Barry's body, you know, before they could do anything like that. Oh, sorry, Kirby. No, it's OK. All I know is that the police are still holding Terry for questioning and, uh, well, you know, I've got to go and find Matty, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's your man. Oh, darling. So where is Terry, anyway? I, I think he's still in the police station. Have you been to the police? I've been ringing the flat all morning. Not yet. Oh. I want you to give me that letter that Curtis wrote saying he didn't do it. It'll help the police believe who killed Sue. Look, we don't want to talk about this out here. It doesn't matter where we talk about it. I have to tell him it was Barry. Oh, back the other night. I'll be honest, if I'd have told you Margaret was coming with me to the meeting, you'd have never have gone, would you? Oh, well, thanks. Instead, I got to live through nine different sorts of embarrassments in under two hours. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Embarrassed about what? I mean, who took the slightest notice of me and Margaret? No, well, you wouldn't see, would you? Just that glue together. Listen, Terry, just before your solicitor pays us a visit, this is... this is just between you and I, right? We don't need a body. But you'd save an awful lot of poll taxpayers' money and a lot of police legwork if you just tell us where the body is. Hmm? He had family, you know. They'll want to bury him. Think about it. And I think you do know people are talking, and that's half the attraction. But what is? Well, like when people have love affairs, like my friend Maria that time, half the excitement there <sighs> because she knew she was in the wrong. That isn't it with me and Margaret. The only thing that will prove to you that I've done the right thing is time. I can't guarantee I'll ever see it as that. I mean, the right thing for me. That's what matters to you, isn't it? Wasn't well, it being a scandal? Of course it is. Come to the shop. No, no. Look, I just wanted to square things with you about the other night, that's all. And now you're going to see Margaret. Look, we just sit together and talk, that's all. Be together. Nothing to start the tongues wagging. That's something, I suppose. Are you going to nip back later and have a cup of tea? Well, well, we did plan to spend the day together. Wouldn't say no to some supper, though, if you were offering. I've eaten a ham. I wasn't expecting you. For some cheese? No, I've eaten. I just didn't want to spend the rest of the lunch hour listening to the new head of music going on about lack of facilities. As if he was the only one. No school politics, please. I've had my quota for today. Mick Johnson came looking for you. Suppose he's bound to be more conscientious about his kids than most. Being a single parent, I mean. Well, he certainly said enough for two at the meeting the other night. Well, he seems to have worked out a nice little conspiracy theory for himself. Something about plans to close the school even before the fire. I told him you wouldn't have known anything about that. You didn't know anything about it, did you? It had been decided before I took the job. The authority was looking for cuts, and Manor Park involved the fewest children, and supposedly less in the way of objections. For once, the vandals did the authority a favour. I just inherited it as a piece of forward planning. Well, I wouldn't let Mick know about that if I were you. He smells a con. Oh, I meant to say don't flush it. He's just about off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll find that photograph I was telling you about. Oh, go away. <laughs> Did the teacher really make you dress up as a little bugger? It wasn't funny. I cried for days. I wanted to be the tidy fairy. I could just see you as a reluctant little bugger. 
Oh, my God, I'd forgotten him. <laughs> it was an old boyfriend's, is it? Let's have a look. No way. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't my boyfriend. It was just this lad that followed me around all day on the school trip to Swallow Falls. Does he look like someone I go out with? God, looks like something to shove in on a lead. <laughs> I'd have followed you around, Swallow Falls. <laughs> so, what's on the cards for this afternoon, then? Well, we've got the place to ourselves. Um, well, we can, um, think about the garden, set the paddling pool up for Thomas when he's had his nap. Sounds good to me. Might be able to manage special discounts for fellow traders, know what I mean? You mean you're moving in here? Well, something was going on. Did you sort the rent out with Barry before he went missing? Uh, hey, listen, tell your Bonnie there's no need to worry. I won't be competing with him in the aisle uh, comestibles, know what I mean? Okay. Food, I won't be selling any. Any pizza, Emma? Hey, 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 hey. No labels, no pack drill. All first class, second, please, kid. To you, a bargain. Hey, Sin, want to get your Marcia down here, kid? Just a job for the bottom drawer, these. Oh, yeah, white lace and knockoff. Great way to start married life, innit? Hey, there won't be nothing in my shop that's not on the level, OK? Two pair of these, the right for us, will you? Duly reserved, Mrs. D. Nice one. So, uh, when is the big day for you and Marcia? Well, we haven't set the exact date yet, but we want to get it right now when we do, do we? Lunch. So far, the police haven't found Barry's body. As far as they know, Terry had no motive. But Terry would get off light, wouldn't he, if the police knew why he'd done it? That it was revenge for Barry killing his wife and kid. But we can't bank on that. That's why if you go waving Graham's letter at the police and telling them it was Barry all along, you've as good as proved Terry's guilty. <sighs> Yeah. I suppose you're right. I know I am. It's best if we tell the police nothing. Oh. 
Hey, if this is all there is, I'll have to go and get some. No, you're all right. I'll nip down to the shops. It is for the best, you know, not telling the police what we know. Yeah. Uh, I could see if they've got any sandwiches if you're hungry. Okay. Listen, Max, I don't want you to think that... Look, I don't want you to blame Mark. I'm not looking to blame anyone. I'm not exactly qualified to hand out moral judgments, am I? I'll ring it, you dig, sir. You sure you want me to do? It's best if you do. You're really mad at me, aren't you? what I feel. I, uh... Well, quite frankly, I feel a bit of a fool. I know that Patricia and I have supported your relationship with Derek, and neither of us assume that you were using the place to... And when you're supposed to be looking after Thomas... Well, he always has a nap. And it was... It would have been... First time. Like I said, I have no room to moralise, and I'm not saying that, that it's wrong for you and Derek to. It's just that here isn't the place, especially with Thomas around. I know. I'm sorry. We didn't mean it to happen. It's just we're not often left on our own, and Thomas was asleep. Would you believe me if I said it won't happen again? Well, I'd be much happier if it didn't. And I mean that. Um, I'll go and wake Thomas up or else he won't sleep tonight. I can't even look at myself sometimes. So is the baby gaining weight? That usually means a good sign of picking up. Got up until yesterday. Lying there like a little skin rabbit. Might be better news when I go in tonight. I'll have a box of them, try and cheer our Sammy up a bit. These? Yeah. These are on the house. Oh, no, I couldn't. Has Matty been in? Matty, you know, he's been staying up at Terry's. Oh, it doesn't matter. <sighs> Saw Terry's dad the other day. He looked like he didn't know what had hit him. It's not surprising. Your son held for murder. I don't know. You think you know all there is to know about your kids. Let me pay for these. Look, that's a small present for Sammy. Tell her Ron and I are thinking about her. Oh, Tuesday. Bye now. Good see you. Thought you were busy today. Oh, no, mate. You can show me the ropes. What ropes? Didn't want to tell you. I'm going to be working here in the shop. He's got to be short staff next week, uh, you know, what with Jackie Cork, he'll uh, have holidays. Derek, you can't work in this shop. It's not... Well, you were a priest. An ex-priest. Ron needed the help, I needed a job. It's only temporary. Anyway, you've been moaning about working here, so this'll get you off the hook. Derek, you can't be a priest at one minute and a shop assistant another. I can, and I intend to. Anyway, we'll save you working here. So what's your problem? Thanks. I trailed it all in from the gardens. Barbara's best carpet. I thought you'd be home by now. Well, sometimes they have meetings after school. Can get quite late, you know. Well, I'll hang on for a minute or two. Look, if it's about what we were talking about earlier, I doubt we should be able to help. Hello. Hello. Looking for me? Well, I'm looking for some answers, yeah. I'm beginning to feel old, Terry. Do you know that? Hey, this whole thing is beginning to make me feel old and tired. What is it? Every time I talk to someone, I say, Barry Grant, Terry Sullivan, they were like that. Blood brothers. And there you are with Grant's blood all over your hands. I mean, what is it? What would make someone kill their best friend and not even bother to tell us where the body is? Look. You haven't had a lot of luck, have you, Tell? A wife that cheats on you. Then she gets herself involved with another man who ends up killing her. It's 
It's hard to live with memories like that, isn't it? And then if you find out that she's been messing around with your best friend as well, is that what happened, Terry, is it? Because if it isn't, tell us, Terry. Look, help yourself by helping us. Tell us why. Tell us where the body is. Then I can tell them that you cooperated and things will go easier for you. Real prison isn't like this, you know. You don't even get to keep your nightmares to yourself there. Don't you see all that you're doing is prolonging your time there? Don't you understand? It's you. You're the one who doesn't understand. Tell us, Terry. Tell us. It doesn't matter. Well, it might matter. It might matter what happens to you. <laughs> what else can happen to me? Are you about to say? You go in there and you're helping put Terry away for good. The least that you can do is listen for two more minutes. Look, what good do you think this will do? I know it's right, that's all. Right? Got... Right for who? Are you just too stupid to see that Terry's better off if the police don't know anything? Hey. Oh, that's right. Go on, like father, like son, eh? Barry hurt people. And now he's dead. You want to help him go on hurting Terry? I don't want to hurt Terry. I just want to tell the truth. Oh, great. Go on, then. Purge yourself. Go and make yourself feel better by telling them that your son pushed Terry's wife and kid off the scaffolding. See how much good that does Terry. Sue and Danny are dead because of Barry. Graham died in prison because of him. Now Barry's gone. There's nobody left to rescue but Terry. Or do you want to see Terry punished? Is that it? No, no, no. Terry's been hurt enough, I know that. And what he did to Barry. Some sort of justice, I suppose. Look, I can't stop you going to the police if you're really set on it. All I can do is beg of you for Terry's sake. If you help the police make a case against Terry, Barry gets to do even more damage than he already has. You can't want to help Barry inflict any more misery. Not if he was your son. Especially not if you loved him. Well, then... We don't even have to lie, we just say nothing. Stay out the police's way. Come on. Let's go and have that cup of tea. But if you can't tell me anything, then who can? I mean, how come if there were plans to shut the school before the fire, the parents didn't get to hear about it? Shall I put the oven on or what? Oh, no, it's all right. I'll come and see to it. Look, you have to understand, if plans had already been made to close Manor Park, that's an authority decision. You really should be taking the matter up with them. I think what she's trying to say is that she's not the person to help. Well, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> hey! Look, you obviously don't understand the way these things work. Oh, I know exactly how it works. Some suits get together in some office somewhere and they decide what my kids can and can't have. And you go along with this penny pinching in case they decide you'll be the next cut they make. Hey, no, hold well, on a it minute. It won't help to lower ourselves to this level of debate. Debate? What debate's that then? The one behind the parents' back, behind closed doors? Just how long ago was that? You're sailing very close to the wind, my friend, walking into my house and talking to my wife like that. Look, do you really think any teacher wants to see schools closed? So why didn't you speak out against it, then? You know, I didn't hear you cribbing at the meeting the other night when they handed you your new car park. All right, that's it. No, oh, no, forget no, no, it. It's just a waste of time, anyway. Will you just answer me this, then? When exactly did they decide to close Manor Park? Oh, come on out. No, no, John, hold on a minute. How about you answering me a question, Mr Johnson? If the authority had made that decision, how could you know about it? 
Let's just say I was told by somebody in the know. All right? Hmm. It would have to be. And if that were true, no, it certainly wouldn't be all right. Anyone involved with the authority who passed on that kind of information would be in serious trouble. If anyone did. And, of course, no one's going to believe that they'd already made plans to close Manor Park. Unless you can name your source. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, I thought we'd have a quiet night in, get a takeaway or something, just the two of us. It wouldn't be pizza, would it? No, it wouldn't. Poor Terry, eh? Nothing ever quite went right for him, did he? And now he's gonna end up doing time for killing an old Mark like Barry Grant. Sad old what? Mm. And we've got to go to the mix. I promise I'd look after the kids while he goes to meet the other parents. Tell you what, he's well knacked about this education thing, isn't he? Mm. Why don't you supposed to be the same if it was our kids and they were gonna lose the school? Sorry. Hey, Sin! Mass! Here! Yeah? What do you think, eh? I think you're going to end up as mincemeat in Ron Dixon's freezer cabinet. Oh, hey, he doesn't know about it yet. And listen, what objections are you going to have anyway? Hey, I'm not selling food, am I? And look, I have even fallen in with his Western theme, haven't I? Look, trading post. Ta-da! Cowboy cuts. <laughs> well, maybe you'll just hang it and give it a decent burial on Boot Hill. What for? Attracting custom? Hey, come on, Mars, don't be encouraging him. Hey, leave it alone, will you? Listen, all I'm doing is turning an honest bob by providing a few bargain buys, that's all. Yeah, well, not as much of a bargain as this place, isn't it, since you're getting it rent-free? All right, says who? Well, who are you paying, Barry Grant? All right, all right, OK. So maybe I intend negotiating with whoever the new owner's gonna be, OK? Yeah, and maybe you intend doing a moonlight as soon as whoever shows his no face. Way. Hey, can we have a quick inside? Uh, my humble establishment <sighs> is at your disposal, Miss Barrett. Eh, uh, I thought we were going round to mix. Well, just a quick look. He's bound to have things we're gonna need. All right, for when we get married. We are getting married, aren't we? Of course we are. For when? We don't want to talk about it here, do we? Come on, let's have a look inside. You don't mind me talking to you, do you, Miss Corkle? Uh, no, I was just on my way to the shops, that's all. So... Brookside Parade? Well, we can chat as we go, then. I was just going to go there after I'd seen you. Um, how's Terry? Will you be holding him for long? Well, that depends. I've still have got a few questions I'll ask him. Brookside Parade. Um, we still haven't found your stepbrother's body, I'm afraid. You are sure Barry's dead, then? Well, it looks that way. Tell me, you didn't know any of uh, your brother's friends, apart from Terry Sullivan, that is? No. Really? Well, he didn't really have many, apart from Terry. Um, unless you mean women friends. Like Fran Pearson, you mean? Well, I know he had a relationship with Angela Lambert, the woman from the hairdressing salon. Something of a relationship, that just about sums it up, really. Barry or the relationship? Oh, look, I don't know anything. I've been away. Tell me, you don't know if he had a relationship with uh, Terry Sullivan's wife, do you? Let's 
too. I don't even know that he liked her. No, it was Terry that he cared for. So, in your opinion, that wouldn't have been cause to have led to an argument that may have led to a shooting? Oh, look, I don't know. I don't know what went on between Terry and Barry. Hiya. Hiya. You're on early. Oh, yeah, a bit. I was hoping we could have a talk before Max gets home. Um, actually, I was going to nip over to the shop on the... Um, we've run out of eggs and you and Max are still... No hurry, you can do that later. I'd really much rather we had a talk. Yeah, I just want to nip and see how Sammy is. Mr Rogers! Hey, have you had any more visits from the boys in blue? Yeah, earlier on. More questions about Terry. Hello, yeah? OK, then, I'll, I'll ring back later. Thanks. Can't find her. Who? This Marion Dwyer. She was a speaker at the school meeting the other night. Yeah, maybe she doesn't want to be found. Well, I only want to ask if she knows exactly when the authorities were going to close the school. Yeah, but maybe she thinks she's told you too much already. You said the deputy head across the road says that anybody giving away state school secrets is likely to get their legs smacked. Yeah, maybe Barbara Harrison's trying to scare me away. In case I spread it around that they were going to close the school even before the fire. It could be she's telling the truth and this Dwyer woman could get into trouble. No, no, but in which case, why would she risk telling you anything? Unless she took one look at your manly physique and decided to reveal all. Behave. <laughs> Did your eyes meet across a crowded public meeting, then? What's she like? Is she fit, then? All right. Well, she must be a right cracker if even you noticed her. Hi, Ray. Hi, Any chance of an introduction? But then again, I already know the woman of my dreams. Oh, well, that's unlucky because she's spoken for me, isn't she? I'm just admiring your taste, Sinbad. Oh, there, you make me sound like a three-piece sweet. <laughs> I've got some sausages for us and the kids' teas. Oh, a nice one, Marcy. I appreciate that. Listen, uh, I've got this idea for a parent protest. I'm going to go and see if I can whip up some support. So I'll see you later, yeah? OK. All right, mate. See you later, yeah? See you, mate. See you, mate. Just sorting some nice things out from Marcia's bottom drawer. All new from Jimmy's shop. Oh. Harrods, eat your heart out. So when are the nuptials, then? Well, it's up to Marcia to set the exact date, isn't it? I mean, it's the bride's prerogative, isn't it? Just as long as I know when to expect the copper plate invite dropping through my door? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't bother if I were you. No? No. I don't suppose Jimmy Cork will stock some. Protest, oh, I don't know, Mick. I mean, what do all the, all the other parents think? Well, you're the first one I've seen so far. You've got to do something, Ant. I mean, especially since the authorities are probably clapping their hands after the vandals burned the kids' school down. Yeah, it certainly looks like we've been hard. Giving us all that guff about how they couldn't afford to rebuild after the fire. They'd already signed the death warrant. Right. So why don't we show them exactly where they can stick their alternative schools? I mean, none of the places they've dispersed the kids to are as good or as close as Manor Park anyway. I agree with what you're saying, but it all seems a bit drastic. Yeah, but it needs to be drastic, Ange. Oh, we meet again, Mr Johnson. You haven't remembered anything useful, I take it? Nope. No, well, nobody seems to know much of anything. Thanks. Mr Nolan's moved in upstairs to keep an eye on things, is that right? Mm -hmm. You haven't seen anything of him, have you? Massey, yeah, he was here yesterday. But he had a few things that he needed sorting out at home, so he wouldn't be around for a bit. He gave me the keys in case she wants to search the flat again or anything. No, not what we were just talking about, Sanch. Oh, Mick, I'm sorry. OK, well, look, uh, I'll call back later. In the meantime, I'll uh, sign out a few other parents what they feel about it. Mm -hmm. See okay. you later. Bye. How is Terry? Not very helpful. Still haven't found Barry, then? I was hoping to see Fran Pearson, but she hasn't been up to the flat recently, has she? 
Johnson, about the other day. What about her? What you didn't give me a chance to say was that, really, it's immaterial when the decision was made to close Manor Park. So you admit they had already decided, then? I don't have to admit or deny anything, as I keep trying to tell you. I'm not part of the decision-making process, so I don't have to defend it. No, you're just following orders and showing gratitude for getting a new car park out of it. What I'm trying to do is to set your mind at rest. Yes, the decision has been made, but the children will get just as good an education at the dispersal schools. Not if I have anything to do with it, they won't. Well, petitions are all very well, but they seldom have any real effect. Thanks. I've worked that one out, seeing as they made paper darts of the last one. So we'll just have to see what effect keeping our kids off school has, won't we? You're not seriously considering. And you're not suggesting that other parents had follow suit? No. We'll see, won't we? <laughs> uh, proper little Mary Poppins, aren't we? What's the matter? Didn't I set it, right? Kids want a picnic instead. Suits me fine. It's one of the things I'm looking forward to, you know, when me and Mass have had on. Kids like that sort of stuff, don't be cowboy breakfast out on the lawn. Of course, we'll have a lawn by then, me and Mass, in our little house. Plenty of space in the garden for the kids to play footy. Shame, like, because you'll probably still be living on your own in your bachelor bed, sitting here. Yeah. yeah. Is it bad? You haven't told the poor little sap yet, have you? Told him what? It sounds like you and Sinbad are looking forward to a rosy future together. What? You know, a house, a garden, kids. Bit of a problem there, though, isn't there? He doesn't know yet. That you can't have any. Don't you want your cup of tea? Um, no, I was going to bring Thomas's things in case it rains. No, no sign of it. Come and have your drink. We may as well get this out of the way. Max told me about coming home the other day to find you and Derek. Well, let's not put too fine a point on it. In bed together. Um, we were more on it, actually. I suppose I was hoping he wouldn't tell you. <laughs> not tell me what my son's nanny was up to in my own house. Max was concerned, Margaret, about Thomas's welfare, and I have to say, so am I. Well, I wasn't neglecting him. I mean, you know I'd never do that. I was just showing Derek some old photographs I keep in my room and... One thing led to another. That doesn't alter the fact, Margaret, that you're employed here. This is where you work. I know, and I'm sorry. I did mean it when I said to Max it won't happen again. I mean, not that anything did happen. We didn't do anything. Presumably only because Max arrived home early and walked in on you. What if Thomas had woken up and toddled in on you? Riding around. Making it sound dirty or something. It wasn't like that. I mean, it was the first time, and it's not as if we don't love each other. I didn't mean to make it sound sordid, and I do know how you and Derek feel about each other. But at the end of the day, my main concern has to be Thomas. Yeah, no, I, I, I am sorry. I honestly, what happened again? And unless you don't want Derek to come round anymore. Derek's welcome, just as he always has been. But Thomas has to be your priority, Margaret, not just a nuisance who gets in the way of your love life. We can trust you on that. Can I go and get Thomas an ice cream? Hey, uh, do you fancy one? Yeah, fresh one for all of us. Yeah, well, her future frau! I bet he gets himself a 99. I'll leave it, will you, Alice? Yeah, you're right. Must be getting soft or something. I actually feel sorry for him. You're not seriously going to let him think he's going to be playing happy families, are you? It's got nothing to do with you. Are you not being able to have kids? Well, it had something to do with me at one point, though, didn't it? I mean, it simplified matters no end. That was a long time ago. And anyway, you didn't want kids. But simple Simon does, though, doesn't he? Don't call him that. And if you go telling him... All right, relax. I wouldn't do that. 
it's down to you. Hi, eh? Hi, bro. What news on the campaign front? Yeah, did you manage to get to speak to any of the parents? Well, quite a few. I mean, some are a bit iffy, but some are all for keeping the kids off school. I think I could get something going here. Yeah. Power to the people, eh? Well, I don't know. It might put a bomb up the education committee's backside if we keep the kids off school until they say they will rebuild Manor Park Primary. Yeah, show them that you're serious. And me and Simbad will help out when we can. And me? I'll keep the cab on the road hey, for you. Now, hang on there a minute. Oh, come on, you can't be spearheading campaigns, bringing up two kids and then taking the cab out. And I'm assuming you want to be able to feed the kids when they're at home. Yeah, do you think you're being a bit rash, Mick? Aren't you better sticking to the job than the campaign? At least then you've got some money coming in. I said I'll take the cab out. Hey, we've been through this a million times. You get caught without a proper cabbie's licence on a serious business. Really? What serious business? What am I missing here? Well, this one's sin. Hey, hang on, the 99ers is. I don't know how I'm going to tell him. But you are. I don't know. Be the end of me and him. Come on, Mass. These ice creams are getting warm. Your hair looks fine, Sam. Doesn't it own? Well, uh oh, yeah, yeah, it looks nice. It's be about 90 degrees in here. Yeah. Hey, I brought this with me. Unless you've come up with one, like. No, um, we haven't thought of any names yet, have we, Sam? That one was nice. The one you had in mind. What was it? Tanya. Oh, she doesn't look like a Tanya, does she? In fact, she doesn't really look like any of the names we thought of before she was born. In fact, none of it was like it should have been, really. Have the doctor said any more about this infection you've got? Yeah, I'm gonna have to have a knock. It's nothing like, but it means I'm gonna have to stay in. Hey, Sadie's a nice name. Now, my mum was called Sadie. Yeah, well, it's no rush, is it, Dad? Well, listen, don't put that away. I'll, uh, I'll go and hang it on an incubator. Do you wanna come with me, or? No, you're all right. I'll come see you later. There you go, love. Thanks very much. Thank you. I tell you what, try us next week. I might have some of you know who's underpants in. Yeah, no, and you would probably still be wearing them. Hey, hey girl, bomb in the Caribbean. You know, the tourists will buy anything for Tracy, everything in here is kosher. Squeaky clean, honest. OK, so I might be doing a bit of the Isle diplomatic immunity over the rent. So what? You know, sometimes it's like I never even went away. All right, what do you mean? Well, not much changes around here, does it? You and your little ventures, oh. all kinds of bother going on. Oh, Barry and Tally, you mean? Yeah, bad business, that. All kinds of policemen hanging around. You know what? Oh, God, I can't feel it. He was round when Sue Sullivan and the baby got killed, you know. Tragic, that. Neither of them any age to die either, I'm telling you. Little well, Barry wasn't that old. It was his birthday last week as well. 33. Oh, yeah. Oh, these really only 22. They're 40 next door at Ross. Oh, yeah, well, got yourself a bargain there, then, haven't you? Yeah, providing you've got lads in them. Behave you. Do you for your mark and those, Mrs H? Well, our deputy heads don't do too much of that, thank goodness. Oh, well, you might be doing even less now if this school strike takes off, eh? Sorry? Well, Mick Johnson was round earlier, you know. He was telling me he's been whipping up support from the parents, you know, keeping the kids off school and that. Not my problem, not my school. Ah, uh, right. Are you, uh? No, go ahead. How much? Er, uh, three quid, boss. Cheers. Look at this record crime watch on them. Hey, you might see something recognises. Are you having those, Mrs H? Oh. 20p, love. Nice one. Top. Hey, listen. Next time you're in, take your time, you know, have a proper browse round. I will if I have the time. Yeah, well. You might have even more on your hands if this uh, school strike spreads to the seniors. See ya.
You know, you don't have to keep on giving yourself a hard time about this. You've got my blessing, so long as you get your priorities right. Thanks. You've been really good. And you don't have to worry about me and Derek being on our own in the house. Well, you do need some time together. Some real privacy. Mm, there's not much chance of that, though, is there? Not with me living on the job and Derek and Dick's. What about going away together, just the two of you? Well, like on holiday. Well, let's face it, it hasn't exactly been love's young dream for either of you, has it? What with all that was involved in terms of Derek giving up the priesthood. You've got some time off you could use. Yeah, I suppose I have. And I suppose there's nothing stopping me and Derek going away together. I'd never thought about it. Oh, maybe you should. Think for me, Sammy. Yeah, but hang on there. Uh, about the name, the baby. Oh, well, everyone asking. Tell them we haven't made up our minds. We don't know yet. Yeah, but it's not just that, is it? You know how Sammy's feeling. I don't see why we should push it into giving a child a name. I mean, it's no big deal, is there? Yeah, but it could be, couldn't it? Uh, when I was down in the baby unit earlier on, the sister. But she thought it might be a good idea if we had the baby christened, just in case. We've got to get her through to Sammy, for the child needs a name. And soon, Sammy's just going to have to face it, that's all. Yeah, well, I want to have a good night's sleep tonight. I'll tell you what, I'll have a word with her in the morning, eh? Oh, you're not listening to what I'm telling you. The morning. It could be too late. The baby. Oh, no. She might not last the night. So I've just got to ring a few more parents tonight, and then there you go. I think we're in business. Okay. I'm glad you're with us, Ange. Told you I'd get support, didn't I? And Angela won't be the only one keeping her kid off school. Look, as a neighbour and hopefully as a friend, I must tell you this can only lead to trouble. Trouble for the authorities, you mean? Might make them think again, though, eh? I doubt it. And I know you think you have your children's best interests at heart. We wouldn't be doing it otherwise, would we? But the transition to their new schools will be a lot easier for them if you as parents simply face the facts. The fact is, they don't need a new school. The old one was on their patch and they were getting a decent education there. So now you intend to deny them any education at all? What we don't intend is getting walked all over, do we? No, no we don't. We keep our kids off school until the authorities decide to give them the school back. Well, it will only cause more disruption for the children. I just hope you realise that the very ones you're campaigning for will be the ones who suffer most. Well, show me. Yeah, see you, mate. Yeah, see you, Aunt. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ was baptised in the River Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and revive us. Bless this water that your servant Louise Francis, who washed in it, Louise may Francis. be made one with Christ nice, in his some. death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. For all might, majesty, authority and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's just to be on the safe side, Sam. And when she's better, and we get her home, we'll have a proper christening do for her. 